Hi, this month's issue is all about music, and it's a topic that we've wanted to cover for a really long time. Tea and music, they actually have been connected for thousands of years. There's a beautiful article in this month's issue about the guqin, which is a wonderful instrument. The guqin and other traditional Chinese music often works really well with tea. When we're brewing gongfu tea, for example, we often play some soft guqin music. The guqin is calming. And it's also a very spiritual instrument. It's been used for thousands of years as a Tao, much like tea. People, sages, would, would carry chins into nature and play softly in a way that they felt was like playing to nature or with nature as though the, the river or the sounds of the birds or cicadas was the beat or melody or background music of, of their chin playing. So music and tea have been related for a really, really long time. And having the space in the magazine to cover the, the, this issue and relationship much more deeply is really rewarding. And that we also accompany it with this first ever uh, music from the hut, which is all these songs that were donated so generously by Global Tea Hut members and that you guys can be able to listen to music by your brothers and sisters around the world has made this month really, really inspiring. A lot of people come to the center and maybe leave with the misunderstanding that we encourage people to always play music with tea. Nothing could be further from the truth. There is, in this world, oh, so much noise, so much distraction. A lot of people need a connection to silence in their life. And tea is a very, very powerful way to just connect to the moment in a really quiet way. When there's external quiet, it helps to inspire the internal stillness that's inside of us. Of course, the internal stillness is much more powerful than the external quiet. Internal stillness can last through even noise. So you can stay still inside, even in a noisy environment. And in such a noisy, distracted world, even if you do find a place with some quiet on the outside, technically it can be disrupted very easily. You could be in the mountains and it's very quiet and then all of a sudden an airplane flies over and you're quiet, your quietude is disturbed. But if you have inner stillness, then that airplane won't bother you because you have an internal stillness. But as we're learning to develop that internal stillness, develop that muscle, it's extremely helpful to have some quietude on the outside that helps to facilitate and encourage that internal stillness, that internal peace. So when we're out serving tea, when I travel and do teachings or tea ceremonies, they're almost always in silence. Occasionally, if I feel that my guests are very distracted or wound up, maybe they've come from a busy place or a stressful, stressful place, I might put on some quiet music to help them relax, but most of the time I'm going to brew the tea in silence. And of course, that doesn't mean complete silence. We aren't brewing tea in a sensory deprivation chamber or something. There's always noises. There's noises of uh, maybe if you're in the city, distant cars or whatever, maybe if you're out in nature, then there's the sounds of cicadas or of other insects or animals. There's the sound of nature itself. So there's always sound around us. But relative quiet is really an important part of tea. The more quiet you are, the more tea rewards you in every possible way. When you quiet down and you're more still, then you taste more. You experience more flavors, more aromas, more mouthfeel. You're able to concentrate and focus on your tea brewing and improve your tea practice. You're able to appreciate the psychosomatic changes going on and you're able, hopefully, to slip into a meditative mind and make the tea practice meditative. So for all those reasons, quietude is very, very important on any level, no matter what your relationship to tea is, as hobby or as spiritual practice. I've traveled with several tea masters to Yunnan when they were blending uh, cakes of poor. For example, I can remember in 2008 or 2007, I went with Master Zhou to Yunnan to blend the um, celebratory red mark and, and blue mark cakes that he was making for Changtai factory. And th they brought out all this raw material, all this mao cha from different mountains. And he, he had to taste, you know, dozens and dozens of tea each day. And one thing that I noticed that really impacted me is that he became very, very quiet, took deep breaths, stilled himself, and went into the tea completely for every single tea. In fact, before he even started, he asked all the factory workers if they would leave him alone, please, and if only us tea people could be there. And he then turned to us and asked us if we would please remain quiet and not talk to each other or to him so that he could focus and, and, and go inward and be very sensitive to the tea. So in this way, tea is going to reward you for being quiet in every possible way. 
So you're going to experience more. If you're talking and distracted, you're not going to taste as much. You're not going to smell as much. You're not going to experience as much. And that is besides the fact that having that external quietude helps us again to cultivate that inner stillness, that meditative mind that makes tea a practice, that makes tea transformative to our lives. So for the most part, tea ceremonies, your tea ceremonies are going to be quiet because you're going to be serving tea to people who are distracted, who have noisy lives and need silence more than they need anything in their life. And they need to learn to love silence. They need to learn to appreciate silence because loving silence is more powerful than silence itself. When you love silence, that means you'll, you'll naturally incline towards it because you love it, right? You can be silent for all kinds of reasons. You can be silent, you go to a retreat and you're silent, even though it's very uncomfortable and you hate it, but you do it because you know it's good for you like medicine, but that's not the same as loving silence. When you love silence, when you love stillness, you're gonna orient your life in that direction and you're always gonna seek out that space internally and externally. And when you begin to love silence and orient your life in that way, then it won't matter if the environment is quiet or not technically because your inward compass will always be oriented towards stillness, towards internal quietude, so that even in noisy environments, you can remain peaceful inside and calm and centered and quiet inside. And that's one of the aims of tea praxis to help facilitate that. So more often, we actually brew tea in quiet. However, here at the center, Right? It's important to remember that we have a, not only a deep love of silence, but we also have a schedule that affords a tremendous amount of silence. There's at least two hours of silent meditation every day here at the center, sometimes more. And in the mornings, guests here will come from an hour of silent meditation. On tea class days, we often then have silent breakfast. So, so that the silence and meditative mind that we cultivate in the, in the zendo, in the meditation hall, can carry outward into breakfast and then into tea. And we, don't, we usually drink tea for about an hour before class begins, and that's all done without talking too. So because our guests are being taught a love of silence and an appreciation for silence, not only in the zendo, not only in the meditation hall, but also in daily activities, we feel that after an hour of meditation, after a silent breakfast, it's often very nice to use music to harmonize and energize the tea session and make it so that there's a, a, a little bit more awakening energy in that tea session before we begin tea class. So we do often uh, incorporate music into our tea ceremonies here, but don't let that lead you to the misunderstanding that we in this tradition or here at the center encourage you to always play music when you drink tea. Nothing could be further from the tr truth because Actually, in most of the tea sessions and most of the settings that you'll find yourself, quiet will be much better than music. So the first question is, should I play music or not? And that has to do with the chashi. You know, we often talk about the chashi as just the tea cloth and the decoration and the teaware, but chashi is really the stage on which the tea happens. It includes everything. It includes my shirt, which should harmonize with the cloth. They go together. It includes the environment around. It includes the music. It includes the lack of music, if there isn't any, and the silence. It includes every element that goes into, you could think of a performance. A performance has sound effects, it has music, it has a stage, it has a backdrop, it has a foreground. It has all of that, and so does tea. It has teaware, it has the chabu, it has the background, it has the person brewing, and the music. So choosing the music is just like choosing any element in the chashi. You have to think about the season. You have to think about your guests. You have to think about your tea that you're brewing, the style of brewing that you're doing. Is it gongfu tea or bowl tea? Is the aim meditation or tea appreciation? If the aim is tea appreciation and you're gonna play music, you might want some soft guqin music just gently in the background. If the aim is meditation and you're drinking bowl tea, you might want some little bit stronger, heavier ambient music that takes people into a more trance-like state. That might be beautiful. It depends, it all depends on your guests and it depends on the ambience of your tea session and what you're trying to create. So choosing the music is just like choosing any element in the chashi. You have to think about all the factors of your guests, the tea you're brewing, the method, the weather, everything. Everything that you can, all the details that you can. The more detail-oriented you, you are, the more you put into the chashi, the better the session will come out. That's true, as we often say, of every aspect of tea. Tea is just like cooking. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. 
Actually, all of life is like that, right? If you buy a store-bought pie, you get store-bought quality pie. If you buy, make a pie from scratch, you get pie made from scratch quality pie. That's the way things are. The more you relate to something, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. Here, we're living a life of tea. So we hike up into the mountains to get our water. We lay charcoal every day and use charcoal to heat our water. We then you know, choose our teaware and make our chashi well. We choose the music in a, in a way that coordinates with, with the tea itself. And that's, that's really putting all of oneself into one's tea. And in that way, the relationship to tea will be much, much more transformative, much better. So you have to think of music as, as another element of chashi. One of the first homeworks that I actually give my students is to find a song or an album that suits a particular kind of tea. Now, that's really a basic kind of generality because as I said, the chashi is, is to honor the occasion. Ichigo ichie or ichai ihue. One encounter, one chance. This occasion, that's part of what a chashi is. So chashi actually, the more specific, the better. So it's a little bit off to say that a music can always fit a tea because you might brew that tea gongfu tea or bowl tea. You might brew it for different guests at different times of year. So it's a little bit misleading to say that, but it's a good place to start, to take a certain tea, like a, the Sun Moon Lake Red Tea Elevation, and then try to find an album that suits it, that harmonizes with it, that awakens it. And learning to actually experience that, that the way that the sound vibrations, the way that the music actually harmonizes or is uh, rough and disjointed with a certain tea or a certain brewing method is a really good place to start understanding how everything affects everything in tea. Um, if you're brewing tea outdoors, I would recommend never taking music. There's always, it's always much better to let the environment in and let the sounds of nature in and let that be a part of the tea. The tea will thrive on that kind of sound. It grew up in that kind of sound. The tea trees, when they were out in the mountains, were surrounded by that kind of sound. That's its home sound. So it will thrive and, and, and resound with that much more than it will with any kind of music. But if you're indoors and, and the occasion calls for music, then definitely you want to start by finding a particular tea. Take one of your teas, your favorite teas, your tea, one of your teas you drink every day, and try to find a song or an album that enhances that tea. And you'll know when you've found it. It's not something uh, esoteric or that you, that you have to intellectualize. You'll feel it. You'll feel that the tea responds to that music. It almost dances or changes in a way that's, that's uh, uh, quite apparent uh, when you find that match. And then when you do find that match, let us know. Put it in the comments below this video or put it in the discussion on our website and let us know what you found. We'd love to hear about it. We'd love to share more music. Um, some of you know we have a Spotify account with a list, a playlist of a lot of tea music that we like. We encourage you to share your playlists th through Spotify or whatever software you use. Share what kind of tea music you like to listen to with the Global Tea community and uh, give other people, inspire them with ideas for uh, music that goes with tea, because there's a lot that definitely does and supports a tea practice. Music and tea have supported each other, as I said, for centuries and centuries and centuries. And obviously, a really easy place to begin also and recognize the connection between tea and music is to play some very quiet guqin music. Because the guqin is such an ancient spiritual instrument, it, it, the playing of it was seen very much as a Tao, just like, the, just like tea. And it's a calming music that also inspires stillness within. So it was never played at like parties or or, kind, or like gatherings with alcohol because the moment you start playing the chin, everybody in the room starts calming down. And so it's not festive, it's kind of deep and tranquil and spiritual. And so some nice chin music with, with tea obviously is an easy place to start to recognize the relationship that sound and music has on a particular tea and the way that it feels in your body and your ability to appreciate it and enjoy it. So you might want to start there with some good a good Gucci album. And from there, try to find some other albums that go along with tea. In general, we find that music without any lyrics, without any words, is much better. Because when you have m music with lyrics, like you know, conventional music, uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever you listen to, soul, uh, something like that, it's often, there's often this weird dialogue where it's almost like, is the tea 
intruding on the music or the music intruding on the tea. It's hard to say, but they kind of conflict and the words get your mind going and kind of distract you away from the tea itself. So usually, typically when we drink tea, we choose like ambient music, Indian classical music, Chinese classical music, Western classical music, uh, and other kinds of, of soft uh, music like that. However, there is the rare occasion where you're having a casual tea session, maybe by yourself or with a few friends, maybe in the afternoon, and you want to listen to some casual music. And that also is, is very, very wonderful. One of my personal favorite things, I don't get to do this very often because I live in a center with a lot of guests and a lot of people, and I rarely have free time, but one of my personal favorites is if I have some free time in an afternoon to sit by myself or with some friends and listen to some Van Morrison while I drink some tea, especially the more spiritual albums that he made in the 80s, Common One, No Guru, No Method, No Teacher, uh, Poetic Champions Compose, uh, Hymns to the Silence. These albums uh, on a lazy afternoon or even late into the night with a good friend who also loves that kind of music and we're sitting and maybe chatting, catching up and drinking as Van the Man sings in the background. Somehow that, that music and, and tea go together really well for me. There is other kinds of music like that. Occasionally in the evening we listen to jazz and tea. Uh, artists like uh, Bill Frizzell and even Coltrane are often wonderful, especially if you're having a nice evening session. But all of that is a little bit more casual tea, not ceremonial tea, not formal tea. It's a little bit more casual, which is also, of course, very wonderful. And I encourage you to explore some of that too if you get the opportunity to enjoy some casual tea and music as well. So there's a lot of room to explore. This is an area of your chashi in which there's a whole world of stuff you can explore. There's a whole uh, wonderful beautiful marriage and relationship between tea and music and it's vast and open and you can explore it from many different levels from the level of the energetics of the sound and the way that it affects the tea so start as i said by finding an album or a song that makes a particular tea dance take a tea that you love like elevation for example and find an album that awakens elevation in you that changes the way it relates to your body in a positive way and then play it, and then after you found it, you can test it by playing it for some guests during a, a, a ceremony when you're not talking and see how it affects them. So that's one area of music and tea that you can explore is the relationship between the vibrations and the sound and tea. And you can do that through a particular tea or you could do that through a particular occasion. You could do that through traditional Chinese music like the guqin. And then there's other areas like what does, what does other music do to tea in a more casual setting? artists like Van the Man or some jazz or whatever. And then maybe you want to choose some harsh music or some strong music just to see if it really does impact the tea in a negative way. I can remember one of my students in the beginning when he first started drinking tea, he liked to listen to kind of heavy trance music as he listened, as he, as he drank tea. And uh, then he came to the center for the first time about a year or two into his tea journey. And he was here in the center and it just so happened one afternoon, everybody went out and he was here alone. He got, so he got a chance to sit and brew tea all by himself in the center. And when we got back, he, uh, he said to me, Wu, I realized something as I was sitting here in the center. I don't know if it's just because I'm here in the center, but I realized that that heavy trance music doesn't go with tea because I tried playing some and it was very di dissonant, right? And maybe it's just because I'm in the center, but I found that the music was th and the tea were dissonant and I shut it off. And then later when he returned home, he emailed me and said, actually, yes, that heavy trance music, I don't know how I didn't notice it before, but they, they're a little bit dissonant. And so, uh, you know, as with all Kung Fu experiments, as with all tea brewing, what we say isn't as important as your own experience. You have to test it. You have to explore. Tea is always, ever and always an experiential practice. And so if you can't experience it or your experience is different, that's fine. You have to explore and test and experiment and try for yourself. And there's a lot of different ways that you can explore the relationship between music and tea. And that is an exploration that will be very, very fun for you. So please enjoy trying different musics and different ways in different settings. And let us know here in the comments or on our site in the discussion, what your results are. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to hear some feedback of what you think of the first of what we hope to be an annual tradition of music for the hot album, which songs 
donated by Global TF members. It's so awesome. Let us know what you think of that too. And remember, love is changing the world. Bowl by bowl.